Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, as you can probably tell by the wonderful setup we have here on the desk, yes, we're going to be doing another video involving the famous $5 Windows 98 PC. And in today's video, we're going to be installing another Linux distribution on this. The last one of these that I did, um, we installed the first version of Ubuntu Linux. Um, which was 4.10 on this computer that I did back in October. But in today's video, as uh, suggested by one of you viewers out there, um, we're going to be installing the very first version of Linux Mint on this computer. Now Linux Mint, as I'm sure that most of you guys know, is definitely one of the more popular Linux distros that uh, is out there today. But uh, development for this actually began uh, in the year 2006, and the very first version of Linux Mint was released that same year in uh, 2006 it was actually released on August 27th, 2006, and that is uh, version 1.0 ADA right here. Now, the interesting thing about this is this was actually a beta release. It was not a uh, fully complete, you know, release of the Linux Mint operating system. It was only a beta. This one, it was actually uh, based on Kubuntu 6.06. Uh, so that is pretty cool. So you are going to see a lot of KDE elements in this OS. Um, but this is actually going to pose a little bit of a challenge because, as I said, this came out in 2006. This computer right here uh, was six years old when this came out. This uh, machine was released in the year 2000. So we're going to see uh, if we can actually install this thing on this computer or if we're going to run into some problems. Uh, and if we do run, run into problems, we're going to see what those problems are. So without any further ado, let me just turn on this computer, put the CD into the drive, and we're going to uh, switch the camera so that you guys can uh, see everything a little bit better. All right, so the machine is booting up here, and we should see if everything goes according to plan. Uh, and yeah, there we go. We are booting off of the CD drive right now. And check this out. We've got this old logo going on up here. Uh, so this was uh, back when the logo was actually a modified version of the Ubuntu or the Kubuntu logo. It's this green logo, pretty cool looking. But yeah, so it was just kind of before they had the uh, logo that they have now. And we're just going to, uh, it says for the default live system, press enter. We're just going to go ahead and do that and boot off of the live CD. Uh, which, you know, will allow us to actually, you know, explore the OS a little bit, but we're just going to use it to actually install uh, the OS onto this hard drive. So it's uncompressing Linux right now, booting the kernel, definitely a good sign. All right, so it is continuing that process right now, loading some hardware drivers. Um, so, so far, so good. Definitely, uh, this is a good sign. Now watch everything break as soon as we go to, <laughs> you know, go to the next phase. And, okay, so the pointer has changed over to the uh, KDE pointer. I'm going to go ahead and adjust the uh, monitor settings right here so that we can actually get this to be a little bit... There we go, because there was a, a black bar on the side there, so... Now it's actually centered properly. And you can see that it just says right there, the K desktop environment, which is, you know, KDE. Um, so it is loading up right now, which is very, very cool. Um, so it's gonna be interesting to see, I've seen some screenshots of this and there doesn't really appear to be a whole lot of Linux Mint like branding, at least on the desktop. So uh, it's gonna be, you know, interesting to see really how this first version is, you know, or just kind of how it compares to the later versions of, uh, you know, Linux Mint. But, you know, this was a beta release, as I said, so it's not like everything is going to be 100% uh, as it would be in a final release. So it appears that everything is actually uh, loaded up here. We've got the wallpaper, we've got the icons on the desktop, we've got the little, uh, you know, bar down here at the bottom, we've got our uh, KDE menu, um, which should show us a list of the applications if it wants to open up here. Uh, the CD drive is definitely still uh, pretty active, as you guys may or may not be able to hear. Um, so yeah, this is our you know little menu with all of our um, applications. What I'm actually going to do now, this is definitely a very very good sign, okay? Because we, we can actually load into the operating system without any problem. So that is a wonderful sign. Um, but what I'm actually going to do is just so we're not going to be running this off the CD the entire time, uh, I am going to go into the install. Uh, wizard right here and actually install this thing onto the hard drive so that we'll actually be able to you know take a look at well first of all take a look at the install process itself and kind of see you know how that is but also once we get through the installation we can actually take a look at some of the features of this OS without um, you know having it load everything off the CD which obviously is not going to be as fast so 
Uh, we're loading the installer right now. All right, so we got this uh, K dialog message that came up and it says, welcome to the Linux Mint installer. This installer will help you install Linux Mint on your hard drive and configure a few things for you. Awesome, we'll press okay. So one thing that I wanna point out is this release of Linux Mint is based on a version of Kubuntu that is two years newer than um, the version of Ubuntu that we took a look at in the previous video where we installed the first version of Ubuntu on this computer. And if you saw that video, you'll know that that release did not have the live CD functionality. You had to actually just load off of the CD and you had to go through the installation. Uh, which was the you know standard text-based uh, Debian um, installation. So this is already a huge improvement over that because it actually has a live CD function. But you can probably see from this text box here that this version of the, of the live CD installer is definitely not as graphical as uh, later versions because there's no like you know partition selector or, or anything like that. It just asks you to type in the uh, partition that you want to install it on. So this is actually this drive is formatted as a uh, FAT32 drive because it's right now running Windows 98. We're just gonna try out um, and see if we can put in dev HDA1. Uh, we might have to actually go into like a format tool, you know, something like uh, you know, boot off of uh, Gparted. Um, okay, well, I mean, I'm just gonna use the uh, example that it gives us here. So the swap partition is gonna be dev HDA2. Where do you wanna set the grub boot manager? Okay, we'll do dev HDA. Linux Mint is now going to install itself in dev HDA1 and use dev HDA2 for swap. The grub boot manager will be installed in dev HDA. Are you ready to proceed with the installation? Yes. Uh, so I, I don't know if it's gonna like format the drive. I would assume it would have to. Okay, so creating ext3 file system. So it's probably going to have to format it because the drive is and uh, it is a FAT32 drive, as I said. Um, so I don't see any like format, like it, it doesn't say that it's formatting, but it says it's copying Linux Mint onto dev uh, HDA1. So, um, yeah, we'll just let it do that and, you know, see if it works. And if it spits out any errors, then, you know, we're going to probably have to boot into, like I said, a tool like Parted Magic uh, and, you know, actually launch Gparted from there and uh, you know, reset or basically format the drive and then uh, put in a, a, a ext3 partition on it. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and let this uh, install here and uh, I'll be back when something interesting happens. All right, welcome back everybody. Now you guys probably can't tell, but there has actually been about a month's worth of time that has passed in between the previous clip and the clip that you're watching right now. And in that time, I have done a lot with this computer. I've updated the memory, I've updated the CPU, so we can now actually get into the proper version of Parted Magic on Hiren's boot CD. We weren't able to get into this before because the computer didn't actually have enough RAM. But we're actually loaded in here to Parted Magic, and you see I've got Gparted opened up. And what I did is I actually manually created these two partitions uh, that it was actually asking for. That was um, the main partition to install Linux Mint on and the swap partition, and then it asks you what device you want to install the Grub Boot Manager onto. And what I actually noticed is that Linux Mint, uh, during the setup process for that kind of example that it had of like where you wanted to install it to, um, it had HDA1, Dev HDA1 as the you know main partition, Dev HDA2 for the swap partition, and then Dev HDA, which is just the name of the uh, like in, entire drive uh, to install the Grub Boot Manager onto. And you can see here that Gparted is displaying this drive as not Dev HDA, but Dev SDA. And I just created the, the two partitions and it's Dev SDA1 and SDA2. Now that's interesting because this is an IDE hard drive in here and IDE hard drives typically in Linux uh, use the HDA uh, device name as opposed to SDA. We're just gonna roll with it because it is working here. We were able to actually create these partitions. You see, I've only made a 10 gig SDA1 partition and a, uh, a two gig uh, swap partition. Well, it does the exact same thing it did before. It keeps saying invalid boot disk yet. All right, so slight change of plans, everybody. Um, I was actually able to do a little bit of research on Linux Mint 1.0, and I actually found that this issue that we're having is actually not that uncommon. I've seen some posts from some people on some various forums that uh, have kind of described the, the same issue, the exact same thing going on, even inside of a virtual machine. And you guys could see I, I, I've used multiple different like 
partition names and device names. I've used uh, SDA1, HDA1, and all of it basically gives us the same result where when it restarts, it just basically comes up and says that there is no uh, you know, boot medium found. So what I actually did is I went online and downloaded Linux Mint 2.0. I went ahead and burned it to a rewritable CD-ROM. Yes, I've actually kind of invested a little bit into getting rewritable CDs, which is going to definitely help with these videos. And Linux Mint 2.0 was released actually the same year that Linux Mint 1.0 was released, just towards the end of the year in November of 2006. Uh, this version uses GNOME, the GNOME desktop environment, instead of KDE, and it's based on Ubuntu 6.10 as opposed to Kubuntu 6.06. .06. So you can see here that for Linux Mint 2.0, uh, it actually comes up with a standard Ubuntu um, you know, boot menu here, so we're going to start or install Ubuntu. You guys may remember that the previous uh, version, 1.0, actually had a slightly modified boot menu that did say Linux Mint. Alright, so this is once again a live CD, so we're loading uh, the operating system right now. Now I'm hoping that the install process uh, for this version is going to be a little bit more user friendly. And yes, it looks like that is going to be the case, which is pretty awesome. So we're going to go with English for the language, click on forward, and we're going to select our time zone, and we're going to select our keyboard layout, which it already has uh, US English selected for us. So we'll click on forward. And for the name, uh, we're just going to use my name, we'll put in Michael, and we'll also put Michael for the username. Uh, we probably, I think, yeah, we have to put a password, so we will put one as the password. Um, and we're going to call this uh, the 98 PC. Even though it's not running Windows 98, we're still going to keep calling it the 98 PC. Now it's going to load up the uh, partition selector, which it looks like it's detecting the file systems that we have, and we're going to erase the entire disk, which you see this time it's recognizing it as HDA as opposed to uh, Parted Magic recognizing it as SDA, so... Um, but it's still an 80 gig drive. We're going to just erase the entire disk and we're going to install uh, Linux Mint, or as this is probably going to say, Ubuntu, which is exactly what we want. So it says, ready to install your new operating system will now be installed with the following settings, um, which is all totally fine. We're going to click on install, and there you have it. It is now installing the operating system. Pretty awesome. Let's see if we can actually boot from it now. But we were able to get through the installation with 1.0, um, but we weren't able to boot from it. So let's see if we can actually fully get through this installation, which it looks like it's definitely taking a bit longer, which is actually a good sign because the 1.0 installer literally didn't really take that long and uh, it was done and it probably didn't even copy anything over because it wasn't able to boot from anything. Um, but it said it was finished. So it looks like it's actually creating a new file system and copying files. Um, so, we can only hope that once this actually finishes and we reboot the system, that we'll be able to uh, load into Linux Mint 2.0. Alright, well, good news everybody. We've got a notification here saying that the installation is complete, and it's asking us to restart the computer. So we're going to go ahead and do just that. We're going to hit restart now. Alright, so here we are booted into Linux Mint 2.0, and obviously it looks uh, exactly the same as it did during the live CD. Uh, installation, although now we just don't have the install icon on the desktop, we are now fully installed, all of these programs are on the hard drive, and we can actually use them, uh, yeah, just like we normally would. Now, um, as I kind of mentioned before, there are still a lot of references to Ubuntu, I have not seen a single uh, string of text that says Linux Mint anywhere, we still have, you know, this is Ubuntu, thanks for your interest in Ubuntu 6.10, although I was able to look up a screenshot for Ubuntu 6.10, and you can see that it's got a different color scheme going on. So I do believe that the color scheme and kind of the different desktop background and the fact that the Ubuntu logo up here is blue as opposed to, you know, the orange that it is in uh, this screenshot here. I do believe that those are changes that uh, the Linux Mint developers actually made themselves. Uh, so maybe they were kind of testing out with what color scheme that they wanted to use. I don't know, but uh, this is definitely not, at least from what I can tell, how Ubuntu 6.10 normally looks. Let's actually go into system preferences and go into desktop background and see if that other desktop wallpaper is in here. So yes, it does actually still have the regular 
um, simple Ubuntu. So yeah, you've got all of your standard applications in here. You've got some GNOME applications like under system here, under administration, you've got your GNOME partition editor, which is what we used before. Uh, it's going to ask us for our password here. And yes, I actually specified a really, really weak password, but that's actually a great segue into what I want to talk about next. If you guys have a lot of online accounts like I do, you probably know that managing multiple passwords can definitely be a huge hassle. So if you're interested in kind of making password management a little bit more convenient for you while also keeping you secure online, you might be interested in checking out today's video sponsor, Dashlane. Dashlane is the easy to use password manager and digital wallet designed to make your online life a little easier while also keeping you secure. Let's face it, password management is something that we all have to deal with whether we like it or not. But it can be extremely difficult to keep track of all of your passwords, especially if you have a lot of online accounts. So instead of coming up with unique passwords yourself, Dashlane can do it for you. It keeps all of your passwords stored in a secure, encrypted vault that only you have access to with a single master password. It can also auto-generate secure passwords for you right from your web browser and auto-fill in form data like addresses and credit card information. This allows you to breeze through sign-up forms and log into all of your online accounts with just one click. You can download Dashlane for free on Windows, macOS, Linux, Android, or iOS. So, if you're interested in trying out Dashlane for completely free on your first device, follow the link in this video's description to get started. And the best part? There's no credit card required at sign up. So, there you have it guys, that is installing an early version of Linux Mint here on the $5 Windows 98 PC. Yeah, it was kind of unfortunate that we weren't able to get version 1.0 to work, but this is basically the next best thing, version 2.0 of uh, Linux Mint. Um, like I said, I did actually download version 3.0 to try in case this one didn't work, but it looks like we're not going to have to do that because, well, we got version 2.0 installed and up and running. Uh, so if you guys enjoyed this video and if you want to see more like it, definitely be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do multiple times per week on this channel. Uh, and also be sure to drop me a comment down below if you guys have any thoughts on this particular version of Linux Mint. Have you ever used this version before? Have you ever seen this earlier version of Linux Mint? Or maybe you're a current Linux Mint user kind of wanting to look back at uh, how your operating system of choice uh, got its start. Uh, be sure to let me know down below, guys. I always enjoy reading what you guys have to say. And as always, I just want to thank you all so much for watching and for your continued support here on this channel. And I will see you all in the next video.